And that will bring me to my Wireshark Network Analyzer window. Uh, let's make that full screen for us. And what we have is our main screen now. And in our main screen, uh, we have several options here. Uh, we have our capture window. In our capture window, uh, we can bring up an interface list. Uh, we can look at the interfaces that are available for capturing here and select one and click Start to begin a capture. Or we can choose some detailed options about our capturing. Down at the bottom, we have a window for help sections. In the middle window, we can open previously captured sessions. And then over here on the far right, uh, we have some online resources that we can use. What we're most interested, though, is capturing packets. So we need to know which interface to use to start capturing on. There's a couple ways we can determine this. My favorite way is first to take a look and see which interface has a default gateway configured. The interface with the default gateway is the one that's connected to the internet. And nine times out of ten, that is the interface we want to use to capture traffic on. Now there are other times when this may not be the case, and in those times you'll have to just determine based on how your workstation running Wireshark is connected to your data network. If we take a look at IP config all, to do that we need to open CMD, and then I'll type IP config slash all. This will show us all the interfaces on our workstation. And the one that's connected to the internet, which is the one that I'll be doing my capturing on, is the only one that has a default gateway configured. I may only have one default gateway configured on my workstation. That interface happens to be right here. I have default gateway configured 192.168.170.2. And that is on the interface that has the description of Intel Pro slash 1000 MT. So I want to be doing my captures on that Intel Pro 1000 MT network connection. The other way to, to take a look and find out what interface you want to capture on is if you select your interface list, the interface list will, the, the one that is actually moving traffic, you'll see that packets increase in that particular interface. So this packet count is going to increase uh, over time, whereas other interfaces aren't going to have any traffic at all. So if I click on my web browser again to just generate some traffic, um, we'll see that my packet count went up to 64 here now, meaning this is the interface that I want to begin collecting my traffic on. So the, the fastest way to do that then is to go down here in our main window, select the interface I want to capture, select Start, and that will bring me to my next Wireshark window, which is my capture window. Now, let me go back to my web browser again to generate some traffic. And I'll click on Chrome Web Store here just to generate some traffic. And then I'm going to close my web browser. And what we're going to see now is Wireshark began tra capturing a lot of traffic. And there are three windows in Wireshark. We have the top window. The top window is our packet list. Uh, and this shows all of the packets that were captured during our session. Now, when I say packet here, I'm referring to a generic datagram, so to speak. This packet list window is actually a combination of the frame, the packet, and the segment, and the data that was received on the interface. Uh, Wireshark tends to use a generic word for datagram that is packet. When we speak about packet, we are actually speaking about network layer packet, meaning IP addressing information. However, in Wireshark, we're using the word packet as a generic term as well. I will try to be as precise as possible when I am referring to the detail section, or the packet detail, in this center window of Wireshark. And here's where we see the frame itself, the entire frame, the frame header, the IP packet header, the UDP, in this case, UDP segment header, and then the application layer information. So what Wireshark does is it breaks up our datagram, or what Wireshark calls a packet, into its separate components. So we have our application layer information, transport layer information, network layer information, data link layer information, 
all separated out for us and translated very nicely for us. Does an outstanding job of this. Last in the bottom window, we see the hexadecimal representation of the ones and the zeros that were received. This first column here just represents a counting number of what column we're looking in at the hexadecimal values. The last column here is the translation from binary into ASCII. And every eight bits of binary can be translated into some ASCII value, which is nothing more than an alphanumeric character. So each alphanumeric character is represented by eight binary bits. And we're just translating that here from the hexadecimal values into ASCII values. Any information we select up in the center window will show the appropriate bits down in the bottom window in my bytes in the packet detail. So if I just want to see my Ethernet header, I can select the Ethernet 2 information. And down in the bits, it will show me just the information related to my Ethernet header. Same thing with network layer header, same thing with transport layer header, and then our application layer data. If we take a look deeper at this, if we look at our Ethernet information, our Ethernet header, as we mentioned earlier, it's going to have a source and destination MAC address. My network layer header, if I expand that, is going to have a source and destination IP address. And if I close that and expand my transport layer information, here I'm going to have a source and destination port number. And this is a DNS query, port 53. And we know that when DNS is making a query to a DNS server for an IP address resolution, it's going to use UDP at the transport layer, which is exactly what we see here, user datagram protocol.